In today's video, we're going to be creating controllers in ASP.NET. We're going to see how I like organizing each one of the endpoints. What's the structure that I always follow in my endpoints. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Amichai, and in this channel, I talk about software architecture, design patterns, things that you want to be familiar with if you're a software engineer. This video is part five in a series in which we're building a REST API completely from scratch, following best practices, ASP.NET 8, etc. So if that sounds interesting, then make sure to smash the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. In any case, this video can be watched standalone from the overall series. Okay, so looking at the project as it stands today, then we can see that currently we don't have anything defined in our program CS. And also if we look at the controllers, then we currently have no controllers defined. So let's go ahead and create our very first controller and let's call this the products controller. And over here is where we're going to be defining our endpoints. So we're going to have a post endpoint and a get endpoint. And this corresponds to the two endpoints that we defined in the previous video which is the create product and the get product. So starting with the create product, let's go ahead and say over here, public I action result, and let's call this simply create. And since this goes ahead and creates a new resource, then we also want to return the created response. We're going to be using the created at action, which allows you to go ahead and specify the method that you can use to fetch this resource and ASP.NET will go ahead and compute the actual route and return that to the client. So this receives three values. One of them is the method that is used to fetch that resource. The next is parameters needed for this method. And the last one is simply the resource itself. So overall, what we're going to have in this endpoint is the create product request. This of course doesn't exist yet and we'll create it in a minute. Then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and actually create the product. And finally, return the 201 created response. Now, the URI that we defined for the create product request is simply slash products. So to configure this as the route, then all we need to do is add the route attribute. And over here, we can either explicitly say products or ASP.NET allows you to simply say over here, controller, and will simply give us the exact same thing, which is slash products. The next endpoint that we're going to have over here is an HTTP get endpoint, and this will be for fetching a resource. So we have this HTTP get, we're going to call this simply get. This will be, looking at the request, will be slash products, and then the product ID. And to define this as the route, then all we need to do is go ahead and define over here that we have the product ID, and we can go ahead and get the value of this parameter simply by saying over here, product ID. And as long as the name over here matches the name over here, then you're good. Now, because we're using a GUID for the product ID, then we also want to go ahead and enforce that the format for this route parameter must be a GUID. Now the get endpoint is not going to be create the product, but it's going to be get the product. And then we want to return 200 okay, which means that over here we want to return okay and simply put the resource. Now I'm reminding you that for the created at action, then we want to specify the method that we can use to fetch the resource that was just created which is this method over here. So what we want to do as the first value is to say name of and put the get endpoint. Then what we want to do is create an anonymous object and create here the product ID property where this will be some GUID that will later have when we actually go ahead and create the product. So this is just a placeholder for now until we have that. So what we have left to do is to define this request and then create the product. So to create this, all we're going to do is to go to the bottom of the file and this is going to have the following three properties. So I'm reminding you that the create product has the name, the category and the subcategory. So let's simply go over here and say string name, string category, and string subcategory. Okay, now that we have this, then we can go back to the create endpoint. And for now, let's simply say that we'll return over here at the request as is back to the caller. And let's go ahead and make a request and see that this actually works end to end as we expect. So to run the project, all we need to do is say .NET run and specify the one review project, which will go ahead and start our application. Great, so we make the request and we get 404 not found, which may seem weird because if we look at the host, then the host indeed is the host of our application. And also we're doing slash products, which corresponds to the product controller definition that we have over here 
So it seems like everything is correct. I want to encourage you to take a moment and think what might be the reason why this isn't working. And because I'm 100% confident that all of you took the time to think about it, then I can simply give you the answer, which is in the program CS, then we aren't telling the ASP.NET framework, what are the various endpoints that we have? To do this, what we want to do is the following. We want to go ahead and say builder.services.addcontrollers. Also, we want to go ahead and map the actual controllers, which this is going to add the actual middleware that will take the request, look at the URI and match the URI to the actual endpoint. And that way the framework will know which controller it should be creating and which endpoint it should be invoking. So now that we have two of these, then let's go ahead and run the application again and see if it works now. So we're making a request and we get 201 created. Now you may be wondering why the values over here are null and this wasn't mapped correctly. Well, for this, we need to go ahead and specify over here that we want the values of this request to be populated from the body. So we can go ahead and say over here from body, then now we have the values as expected. Now, if we want to automatically infer all the various values from the request URI headers and the body to whatever we specify over here as the parameters of this method, then we can go ahead and use the API controller attribute. And then we don't need to explicitly say over here from, and depending on our case, then put from body, from header, etc. We don't need this. This is inferred automatically by using the API controller attribute. Now for creating the product, then what we would like to have is somehow the product where the product is created based on the request details. Now our internal representation will sit under the domain folder. So inside domain, let's go ahead and create the product class. And in here, we're going to have the following properties. So we're going to have the name alongside the category and the subcategory and internally within our system, then a product is going to have an ID. So let's also go ahead and add the ID, but the ID won't be required. And if you don't specify it, then this is simply initialized using a new GUI. Once we have this, then we can also go ahead and return the correct product ID simply by saying product and accessing the ID property, which was auto generated for us. Finally, we have the actual resource that we created, which of course isn't the incoming request, but again, we don't want this to be our internal representation, which is the product. So this isn't what we want to return back to the client. So for this, let's go ahead and define over here another record. And this is going to be the product response. And this alongside the other properties is also going to have the ID. Once we have this conversion, then we could go ahead and return the response as so. So overall, in any endpoint that we create, we want to have three parts as follows. Part number one is the mapping from the external representation to the internal representation. We're simply going to be calling this to domain. This is the mapping from the API definition to the domain's definition. Next, we're going to have the actual use case the feature that we want to invoke being invoked by the controller. So the actual logic doesn't sit over here. We want to extract this to another component and the controller's responsibility is simply to invoke this logic. So let's simply say over here, invoke use case. Lastly, we have the mapping back to the external representation. So to make things a bit more organized, let's go ahead and take this request and add a two domain method on it, which will take the request and turn it into one of these products for us. So basically encapsulating this logic over here. Similarly, we have the product response and we can have the product response also know how to construct itself given a product object by saying we have over here from domain, which receives the product and constructs this object based on the product details. Now, I want you to notice that we're not putting the logic inside the product object because we want the product object to contain only the business concerns. And again, we'll talk about that more in depth in the next video. But for now, I want you to notice that we're putting the actual conversions inside the DTOs and not inside our domain objects. Anyway, now that we have this, then we can go back to the response. And instead of having this entire thing, we can simply say product response and we can say from domain and pass it the product 
that we created. Okay, so now that we have this entire thing, then we're only missing this central part, which is creating the product. Now, like we said, we don't want this to sit inside the controller. So let's go ahead and create inside the services, a new service called product service. And over here, we're going to have the method needed to create the actual product. So let's say public void, and let's call this simply create. This receives a product, and this will be used by the products controller by saying we have over here a read only products service, which will be used over here to say product service dot create and we'll pass it the underlying product. Now to be able to use the product service, then let's go back to the program CS and let's add over here to the dependency injection IOC container. Let's add as scoped the products service and then let's go ahead and pull it from the dependency injection IOC container in the primary constructor and assign it like so. So here we have more or less how we want any endpoint to look, which is mapping to an internal representation, invoking the use case, and finally mapping to the external representation. Now you won't always need to map to an external representation or to map to the internal representation, but if you do need, then this is what it will look like. So for example, in the get endpoint, then we have the product ID and this is already in GUI form, meaning that we don't need to map it to the internal representation because also internally, it's simply a GUI. So we can go ahead and do the following. We can say we have the product service, let's call get pass it the product ID. And this over here is the invoking the use case. And finally, we can return the product over here simply by saying product response from domain and passing it the product. And this already exists. It's reused across both of the endpoints. Now, of course, we don't have this get method yet. So let's go ahead and create it alongside the create. So overall, here are our two endpoints. And I want us to be able to actually run this end to end and see that the product is actually saved over here and we're fetching it over here. So for this, let's go to the product service and let's create over here a private static read only list of product. And let's call this the product repository. And this is where we're going to be storing our product in the create, then we're going to be adding the product to the list of products. And over here, then we'll go ahead and call find. And this is what we'll return. But we're over here returning the product. And this isn't always the case because sometimes the product just doesn't exist. So let's put a question mark over here, representing that we may or may not be returning the product. And then in the controller, then we won't always be returning. Okay, if the product is null, then what we'll want to return is simply not found. And if everything is okay, then we'll return okay. But we don't actually want to return not found like this. Instead, what we want to do is we want to return a problem details response. And overall, what we have is again, the controller being responsible to take whatever internal representation that we have in our case, it's either product or null and convert it either to the product response or to the not found response. So now if we make a create product request, then we get the 201 created as expected. And what we can actually do is we can define this request as a named request. So let's call this simply create. And below then what we can do is we can say get and use the create response header that we got over here to fetch the specific product that we just created. So overall, we have the get based on location header. And this again is computed based on the location header that we got in the response. So now I think we have enough background to be able to talk about presentation logic versus application logic versus domain logic, where we want to put the underlying code in our code base and how this logical separation helps our code base grow in a more natural and organized way. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you want to watch the next video, then make sure to smash the subscribe button and I'll see you there.